Here he is, the crown prince of comedy, His Royal Highness, Richard Pryor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Rover. <laughs> that we used to say it when we get high all the time. You know? you know, when you get high, you think a lot of silly shit, right? Usually, <laughs> you know, a wedding announcement would be like, you know, Mrs. Irma Schwartz announces the marriage of her daughter, Ethel, to Bongo Santa Maria. <laughs> If you had to be high, I guess if you're high, you dig all that. You do a lot of weird shit. Yeah. I used to smoke a lot. I had a lot of fun smoking. I started getting paranoid. I had to quit. I started snorting cocaine. I had to quit that, too, because I wake up in the middle of the night and say to my wife, You fucking the paper boy? <laughs> well, I got a wife. It's really funny to have a wife, because we was in love, man, like a bitch, till we got married. <laughs> It was cool, man. No, it was really fun. It's just, you know, we had real funny things we should do together. It was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I used to bring her a rock. She'd go, oh, a rock. <laughs> a rock for me? I bring that bitch a rock now, she hit me with it. <laughs> <laughs> right, she got me to marry her when we was balling. I was coming. Will you marry me? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Being married is hard, you know, because we fuck from memory now. <laughs> you have some great fights, though. You ever have fights with your woman? I mean, me and my woman have serious fist fights. Like, you know, not like on TV, you know, where you be arguing. Because she hurt my ego, I punch her out. Me and her fights our ass off upstairs. Because I find if you be with a woman, if you don't fuck in a week, you got to fight. <laughs> You either fuck or fight. <laughs> One of the two. Either. You gonna give up something, you know. Then it's nice to fuck after you fight, though. Then you just let me rest, okay? <laughs> you ever have a fight with your wife, you know, and you try to bully them, see? And sometimes it work, you know. Bitch, I'll kill you! <laughs> that don't work no more. <laughs> she run downstairs, get a butcher knife. She's a butcher knife girl. But she lets me get her wrist before she pulls it on me. Right, you get a wrist. <laughs> now let go of this fucking knife. Oh, well, God damn, let go of this fucking knife. Well, I'm not playing with your ass. Well, let go of it. <laughs> Don't let go of my face. <laughs> Take your fucking hand off my face. I ain't playing with you. You're going to scratch me. Let go of my fucking face. We're well, going tonight right now. Look at this. Look what you need on my neck. Look at that. Nail polish my ass. Look at that. That's what I, mean, man. I ain't letting go of shit. You better not grab my nut. <laughs> you can get them with that one, you know, when they get close to your body. Oh, oh my nuts! Give me the nuts! She goes, great. I'm sorry, I'm sorry! You, know, you walk around three or four days, get service and everything. I help you. Leave me alone, goddammit. <laughs> My wife and I, we had a lot of fun, man, for a long time. But she had this girlfriend. That fucked it up. <laughs> With the big titties, you know the type of girlfriend I'm talking about, that I tried to ignore for six months. When she'd come in the house, like, Hello there, how you doing? I don't really notice your tits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One day my wife come home and said she left her wallet over to her house. I ran. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> then I got the guilties. After we fucked, you know, I had to tell my old woman, you know, because I thought she knew. Have you seen Ethel? I did it! <laughs> <laughs> did what? I fucked Ethel! <laughs> you fucked Ethel! You know, she went up and kicked Ethel's ass. You know. <laughs> she was fucking her too. <laughs> I don't have no advice for married people except never take your wife on an orgy. Because they always say things like, you never touch me like that. <laughs> you got a beautiful layer. <laughs> I'd hate to hear you coming. <laughs> right, Give them some of school, though. 
coming is the coolest thing in the world. Because you come, you can't be mad at all coming. I ain't never been mad coming. Y'all think about it. You ever, you have come, haven't you? <laughs> Some people don't come, right? I know President Nixon don't come, right? <laughs> if he does, he apologizes. <laughs> I think President Nixon's a lesbian. <laughs> right, you know, Agnew's his man. <laughs> President Nixon, my man, he's gonna do a lot for black people. I'm learning how to tap dance. <laughs> this is great though. I remember when I was a like a teenager and shit, you know, I didn't get nothing from the girls. You know, like some of the cool guys could get some all the time. You remember those guys? It was just cool, could get some. You know, they can say, bitch, and girl go, oh. I say that and get an ass whooping. But, but, I ain't no bitch. <laughs> Girls give you something, but they always make you lie, right? Right, yeah, you know. They go, I would, but you'll tell. Who, me? <laughs> you couldn't wait. Hey, fellas, guess what happened? Me and I was out of sight. You know, or did you ever go out with girls say no and help you? <laughs> well, you know, no, don't touch me, please. Leave me alone. No, no, no. I'm Catholic. You know. Fathers catch you, you know, in the front room. What are your kids doing in the front room, the door lock? You know, what are you doing in there, Mr. Pryor? Oh, nothing, sir. Just sitting here on the couch with my pants off. <laughs> Fathers kicked ass in my neighborhood, Jack. Yeah. yeah. They talked to us on the porch. Like, Say, boy, what, what's your name? You jinkin'? Let me tell you something, boy. You stay away from around my house. You understand? See, I works too hard <laughs> to send my girls to school to get education. And not the kind you want to give them. Now, if I catch you around here, I'm going to take this bad leg off and wear your ass out with it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the guys challenge old man, right? You know, come on, old dude, you ain't said shit. You know? <laughs> old man don't bullshit when they be fighting, all right? <laughs> I'll kill your ass. <laughs> Feel no reputation off of me. <laughs> we had dudes used to fight and shit and didn't argue. Remember those dudes? Right. What? <laughs> right. Then you had dudes fight you and talk to you while, at the same time while they whoop your ass. Right. <laughs> Why you want to fuck with me, man? <laughs> I ain't done nothing to you. <laughs> Get him off me, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> We had some terrible arguments, too, like guys argue before they fight. Are you supposed to be bad or something, man? Well, no, we'll do something, then. No, you bad? Well, get up. No, you bad. Come on, get down, nigga. Yeah, come on. No, you here. Push me. I'm going to see how bad you are right now, man. That's right. Well, come on, then. Come on, push me. Mm -hmm. Now, push me again. <laughs> right, dudes be fighting. <laughs> Let's be some bitches around and they get cool. <laughs> Girls get you killed yeah. trying to be cool. I developed a cool run. I did, because I couldn't fight, but I had, in case the girls see me run, I said, look, Richard's running, yes, but he's cool. <laughs> I'd be running from the cops and shit, you know, because we have like curfew, 11 o'clock. Right, you had to be home. Niggas had to be home by 11. Negroes, 12. <laughs> and white cops worked at night. Your ass was in trouble if they caught you. Right, they catch you now. Like, Get your hands up, black boy. Ah! I didn't do nothing. Shut up, punk. Put your hands against the wall. There ain't no wall. Find one. <laughs> Put the handcuffs on you, Fred. Put the handcuffs on me. I was really skinny to slip off. <laughs> Try to get mad. Goddamn, put him on his ankles, his ass, or something. <laughs> Handcuff your thighs, you know. Pop you to the car. <laughs> Take you downtown. You been downtown? You folks know about going downtown. <laughs> and they talk shit to you, right? Good thing you ain't in Alabama, boy. <laughs> We clean your goddamn plow. And I'd be glad I wasn't in Alabama, too. I hate it for him to call my father up, though, right? Because, you know, Mr. Pryor, we have your son down here at headquarters. What about it? Fuck him. <laughs> I hate it for 
remember my father come get me out of jail, right? Because I know he's going to beat my ass, right? You know, I'd be praying something happened to him on the way down there. <laughs> but he always showed up, right? Uh-huh, I'm going to get you out. Uh-huh, I'm going to get you out, but I'm going to tell you your ass. I'm going to tell you my ass. Uh, how much is it, man? $10? Yeah, I'm going to pay it. I'm going to knock the shit out of him. <laughs> I couldn't lie to my old man or nothing, right? Because he could hypnotize me, right? He had them eyes check you right out, you know what I'm talking about. Say, man, you fucking up in school again. Huh? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I noticed, like, on the nights, like, white people come out early on Saturday night and go home and leave it to the niggas. <laughs> this greatly, we think that all that, we can all sit in the same club together, white and black, and not understand each other. <laughs> it's amazing. It can only happen in America. <laughs> I used to love getting arrested, though, in the Peoria on Saturday night because it was fun if you was in the lineup. That was like being in show business. Because, <laughs> like, all the ugly white girls couldn't get in, he said niggas raped them. <laughs> but, all right, come on. Uh, you want to go down? You were down last week. You know what to do, don't you? You know, it's a lot of fun unless you got picked. That was your ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring it up up there. <laughs> Alan T. Johnson, suspected of Grand Theft Auto, step forward. Oh, uh, I'd like to say something about that. Oh, uh, I thought that was my mother's car, man. <laughs> I went downtown. My mother told me to pick the car up at 1.30. And it was in front of the bank, and I was took the car. I was about two blocks from home, and I dug this white lady sitting next to me screaming and shit. I didn't know what was happening. I thought it was a stick-up. In fact, I want to press charges against her, because she scratched my hand and shit, and yelled out in my ear and hurt my ear and everything. I have medical reports to prove that... You want an ass whooping? <laughs> Bunny T. Wilson, uh, handing out anti-government literature, step forward. You're goddamn right. That's right, I'm gonna hand out ass whooping when I get these handcuffs off. And got your badge number, chump. You need that shit. I don't hear it, nigga. Get that processed out your head. Arnold T. Perkins, molesting school children, step forward. Uh... Gee whiz, can we dim these lights? This is ridiculous. This is, uh, this is obscene in itself, well, gentlemen. I have some friends on the city council, and you will hear from them. I've never molested any child or done any, anything in the community. I've done the best I can at all times. Okay, step back just a minute. A lot of people never masturbated, especially girls, right? Oh, no, no, I never, ever touch myself. That vibrator's from my back. <laughs> Religion fucks a lot of people up. I'm talking about the motherfucking God we trust is on a dollar. That's the only dude they talking about. Y'all talking about, ooh, go to church with no money and don't, don't you feel bad? <laughs> well, I don't have nothing to put in. Everybody in church know it. You didn't even put nothing in the collection. <laughs> Kiss my ass and shit in it. <laughs> Y'all want some shit? You give me shit. Here's some more. <laughs> no, but church be happy. Catholic church is hip because they got a gimmick. That freaky water. <laughs> you know, you can freak off and be cool and be Catholic. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a sign of spirits. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember the Salvation Army had all the virgins. You remember? No. I'm saving myself for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell they were virgin, right? Because everything's drawn up. <laughs> I envisioned right so that they meet some hippie. Hi there, I'm the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Midwest, they own God. The hillbillies, you hear them on the radio Sunday morning. You turn on the radio. Out there, friends and neighbors, has God touched you today? <laughs> well, if it hasn't touched you, you send us a dollar eighty-five cents, and we'll send you absolutely free a touch from God. <laughs> uh, and they always have some woman confessor, right? You know. I was lost and alone. I had nowhere to go and nothing to do. God found me. Now I have plenty to do and nowhere to go. <laughs> 
I went to white Protestant church for a while, you know, but it scared me, man. The music, they had some weird music going. Ooh. Oh. I expect a Dracula to come jumping out any second. Ooh. If he did, I'd have held up the cross. Because he's allergic to bullshit. <laughs> Black preachers know God personally. <laughs> when you go to you, you know, I first met God in 1929. <laughs> Outside a little hotel in Baltimore. I was walking down the street eating a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> That's right, 1929, you eat anything you could get. And I heard this voice call unto me. And the voice had power and matches. And the voice said, Psst. And I walked up to the voice and I said, What? And the voice got magnificent and holy and resounded. Duh. And the voice said, Give me some of that sandwich. <laughs> well, ever since that day, I've been able to heal. Because I didn't get up off the sandwich. So if you're God, make your own goddamn sandwich. I ain't mess with you, don't mess with me. It's rough out here, God. <laughs> winos knew God. <laughs> they all knew Jesus Christ, right? Every wino. I never, you know, Je Jesus Christ? Shit, live over there in the project. <laughs> Run the elevator down to Jefferson Hotel, man. <laughs> Nigga ain't shit. <laughs> knew his mama. In fact, my mama saved his mama life up there in the third floor apartment at Taft Home. Didn't get a nickel for it. That's right, because she was carrying that boy. Knew it was a boy because she was carrying it low. And she told her husband, Joe, God made the baby. He damn near killed her with a cue stick up there. I'm one of the few people that remember being born, and I'd, I'd like to do it for you. Uh, could I have a lady volunteer? <laughs> like to strip naked. And the girls being, I thought Negro guys were built better than that. <laughs> Blow our image. <laughs> yeah. White dudes believe that shit too. Like, you colored guys really have big ones, don't you? <laughs> you guys sure do. Want to see? <laughs> I wish I could turn y'all on or something. It'd be hip if we all got naked and just fucked each other. <laughs> Nobody would ever believe that. <laughs> right? You can imagine telling somebody, you know what we did last night at Red Fox? <laughs> I have a thing for nudity, don't I? I always like to get naked. Did that in Vegas. Got naked, run through the casino nude. Right? Jumped on the 21 table and said, Blackjack. <laughs> In my neighborhood, cops was dangerous because we had like I spy cops, right? You know, white cop and black cop worked together. And the, and the black cop had to do more shit to keep his job. You know, he had to work more niggas than the white cop. You know, I ain't gonna lose my picture, nigga. <laughs> the cops come around, we'd be singing and shit. <laughs> Cop, break that up. You can. Uh, what's going on here? Huh? What's this supposed to be? Some kind of community saying? Well, goddamn it, let's break it up, huh? And weasel, you on parole? I don't want to get in your ass. Now we're going around the block. When I come back, I want everybody gone. Well, he was gone. The guy sell wolf tickets, right? I ain't gone. No, please. <laughs> Move me. Me, yes. You guys running around and say, I ain't moving. I didn't have to go to work. That's it. <laughs> but I got a slip. Cops was dangerous. Fighting was cool. Old men, like my father and them didn't fight and shit, but they'd always be talking about fights. Like in the barbershop, they talk about Kid Gavilan, Sadly Sadler. And my father would read the almanac and wait for somebody to make a mistake. 
19 what? <laughs> what? Uh, 19, 25 my ass? <laughs> Shit, nigga, you wasn't even born when it happened. 1932. 1925. Nigga, don't even know what you're talking about, man. They fucked 55 rounds. <laughs> I got it in the book, nigga, I'll show you. <laughs> you got your car here, nigga, follow me. <laughs> There was always one name in boxing you could bring up, fuck everybody up, right? Here, like, but what if he'd have fought Sugar Ray Robinson? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, woo! You don't fuck with the sugar. <laughs> woo! Hey, man, sugar fight so good, make you dig hard. <laughs> huh? Sugar getting the motherfuckers ass. That's Jake LaMotta. He fought Jake LaMotta, Jake didn't fall. That's Jake, Jake. I didn't fall. <laughs> How can you fall? 25,000 whiteys holding you up. <laughs> mm, I wish I could have. <laughs> Good boxing, serious. You know, niggas and white people fight. I always be rooting for the nigga, even if he bad. Please whoop the white folks. I don't want white folks to win. Nothing. Even Jerry West. I wish that motherfucker couldn't play basketball. <laughs> That's it. But that motherfucker can play some basketball. <laughs> I seen him make niggas look ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, niggas be out here, Jared, and made 22 points. This is embarrassing, you know. Because they don't give a nigga a break. You know what I mean? Jackson Five be singing their ass off. They be talking about the Osmond Brothers. <laughs> Motherfucker, Osmond Brothers. Coconut dots and pink shoelaces. What hurts me most when they interview a nigga that they hire? You know the type. And what do you think of the white folks against the Negroes? Well, I think the white folks are correct, as usual. <laughs> They're doing the best they can for us, and we should give them an opportunity. <laughs> so what this nigga talking about? <laughs> That's the same nigga be talking about. Why don't you never talk about us? We fought the Indians. Yeah. Shut up, motherfucker. <laughs> you ain't got enough trouble. <laughs> You want the Indians to hate us too? <laughs> I went into my black bag, got in jail. I was in jail, like in California, they arrest you, they be serious. They look all in your asshole in jail. They go, you talking about degrade a nigga, they degrade you immediately. Take off, you go looking, I don't know what they be looking for. I said, what you looking for, man? In my ass. <laughs> Ain't nothing in my ass. If I had a pussy, I might could dig it, but... <laughs> you know, because you can hide something in your pussy. <laughs> but in my ass, what am I hide in my hand? Huh? A pistol? <laughs> so come out with a 45 go out. Up against the wall, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's rough in jail, because you can get an ass whooping in jail and nobody care. They was going to whoop my ass and just walk by the nigga. That's the policeman. He talking about, why don't you cooperate? <laughs> well, it's exciting, you know, being in the show business. It's, it's exciting, you know. I like going home because I can show off when I go home. But some brothers break my face. Nigga, you ain't shit. You wasn't shit when you was here. I seen you do that shit on. That's the same shit you doing around the pool room, nigga. It ain't nothing. Let me have a dollar. <laughs> You owe me that. <laughs> and there's always some girl when you go home and you're home down down. And you know you ain't you ain't sending that girl no money for that baby. <laughs> no, that's your baby, don't you? <laughs> Look just like you. <laughs> you go see the baby, blonde, blue hair, <laughs> blonde, blue hair. <laughs> It's a terrible baby. <laughs> I would love it if, like, the president had a baby to be black. Just for kicks. Like the magic Christian whoops some shit on it. 
<laughs> and we used to hang out with white dudes, and at night, we used to go after hours. That was cool. If you go after hours, because you need to get dope and shit. Dope was big in, in those days, because most of the niggas I knew wasn't doing nothing. Like, niggas nowadays be serious. The same niggas was winos is in the Panthers now, doing something for the community. <laughs> you know what I mean? They ain't bullshit. <laughs> you have to kill them now. Whereas you should can give them some wine, you have to give them some bullets and a target. <laughs> but it's beautiful though, man. But you know, we used to go after hours, you know, you knock on the door and shit, you know, try to get in, you know. What do you want? Uh, Hank Sammy. I don't know goddamn Hank. <laughs> Say, nigga, what the fuck wrong with you? You gonna slam the door in my face? Much money I spend in this raggedy motherfucker? <laughs> nigga, you don't own the place anyway. The white man own the place. He just front your black ass off. But I knew your mama when she was horn. <laughs> Come on in, man. I was gonna let you in. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> and the first person you see when you walk in is Big Black Bertha. <laughs> she has a big black shining ass, sculptured ass. My ass weighs about 280, Bertha weighs 300. <laughs> ass got them riffles in it. And dress never cover ass. Cover the front beautifully, clean, but when she turned around, ass for days. <laughs> Kiss my ass, motherfucker. She ain't gonna buy no pussy, nigga. Kiss my ass. Tell me shit. Give me a fish sandwich, girl. When you go in the back room where the Negroes shoot craps. I always thought that meant throwing shit. So, but they be in the back, you know, having a nice subdued day. Tell me, guts, down on these niggas' head is eating that. Give me a six. If I don't six, ain't a Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean I ain't throwing far enough? I'm throwing across the street, nigga. Oh, <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, I know how to throw them, nigga. Just tell me, I lock them anywhere. I shake the motherfucking one at a time on the bottom of the floor. Some room floor. <laughs> 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 and there's always some old dude in the place never makes a bet, but makes all the noise in the place. Right, the guy. Now what you going do, nigga? You done fucked up the game. Hey, the dust eyes and half ain't got a nickel. Made every number on the thing, man, ain't got a pen at that name. Get your ass away from the table. Buy shit, buy this. The smart guys, there you go. What you mean, man? That boy just come in, man, ain't his day. I was here and I, I, Raymond was standing there, man. And the girl was next to me. She done moved. That's Raymond. Why Raymond? Well, don't ask nobody nothing there. That's all right. If I want to die, so I buy him. You got change for a dollar? <laughs> no, I'm here to gamble, man. I ain't bullshitting. <laughs> Well, put your money down. I covered nigga if it's a hundred dollars. Put it down. <laughs> yeah, that's a hundred. I ain't got to show you shit. <laughs> right, and you go into like the parlor and there's usually two hillbilly dudes trying to buy pussy. Like, uh, uh, you know where you can get us a couple black girls? We'll kind of do a little something to you. I mean, she'll sure appreciate it. <laughs> Think you can fix us up? We can't look. How come you dudes don't ever bring no white bitches with you when you come down here? Now look, ain't no need to talk dirty. Yeah. Yeah. There'd always be a raid, but you wouldn't know if it was a raid or not, because the white cop and the black cop be together, and he may time out on your ass. You know, emergency. <laughs>
Who is it? Cops, cops, man. Everybody get ready. Shit, cops. <laughs> and the cops come in, right? Oh. Uh, uh, don't worry, partner, Hannah. Uh, uh, anybody around there seen Jesse? We're looking for Jesse. You seen Jesse? No, nigga, I don't want no radio. Uh, Raymond, you seen Jesse? Not me, no lie. Swear to God, I ain't seen nobody since 1922. I seen you walk in the door. <laughs> Ain't that right, Bertha? Kiss my ass, nigga. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, cool breeze, you seen Jesse, man? <laughs> no, I ain't seen no goddamn Jesse. <laughs> I look like radar. <laughs> man, me. If you see the nigga sending to me, owes me $25. Nigga, and I needs my money. Bad and the hog needs slop. That's why I got this place open to make some money, nigga. Yeah, you ain't come fuck that up. But this, you know, they got some white Jesses. They knock people in the head. Why don't you go over there, nigga, look for a Jesse? <laughs> now, you're going to respect the law. I got some shit too, nigga. Well, you respect my shit and I respect yours. Then his partner takes over. No, no, just a minute. Let's just calm down. For Christ's sake, let's just take it easy. Now, Jim and Italy, we're doing the best we can. And let's cut the crap. We're doing our job down here. We're officers of law, and we're trying to do the best we can. And we need your cooperation, and we're trying our God's darnest to help you people down here. Now, how about chipping in? What do you say? Fuck you, hunky. <laughs> I don't understand your people. <laughs> I remember Whitey used to jab the insurance men when they come down. No, motherfucker, I don't have no money. <laughs> well, all we meant was if you just could give us 15 cents or something like that toward the policy. Look, motherfucker, I said I didn't have a quarter. Now get your ass away from right here. <laughs> If you die, you get three hundred dollars. Is that it? <laughs> being black was being cool. I remember it wasn't black in those days because black wasn't beautiful yet. Remember, you couldn't even say black. You called dude black. I don't play that. <laughs> don't call me black. I'm a Negro. <laughs> Black men come through our neighborhood, man, dressed in like the clothes you have on. Black men, you know what I'm talking about? Be black and be proud. My parents go, that nigga crazy. <laughs> you know, like you can't talk about fucking in America, right? People say you're dirty. But if you talk about killing somebody, that's cool. <laughs> I don't understand it. Amen. Myself, I'd rather come. <laughs> I've had money and never felt as good as I felt when I come. <laughs> so nothing matter, but when you get in a nut, especially if it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas be signifying doing your act. I'm like, I knew, you know they all in the <laughs> I was the only dude in the neighborhood would fuck this faggot, though. Yeah. A lot of dudes don't play that shit, you know, because in the daytime, I don't fuck this faggot, man. <laughs> At night, you kiss him. <laughs> right, but it's embarrassing because I meant to do like 10 years later. Hi, Rich. <laughs> people don't talk about nothing real. Like, you talk about shit real, like jacking off. A lot of people didn't jack off. I did. I used to jack off so much, I knew pussy couldn't be as good as my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've spent my life, though, I must confess, dedicated to finding the elusive snapping pussy. 
I've heard about it all my life. I've never seen a snapping pussy. Dudes talk about the snapping pussy all over the world. Man, she had a snapping pussy. Dude, wow. Uh, what did you do? Just went and did things. Wow. Uh, why aren't you marry? It costs too much. So, uh, yes, you talk about anything real fuck people up, like fart. Like, we all fart, that's human. Right? If you don't fart, you blow your brains out. <laughs> Try not to fart. <laughs> you, a fart will come out as a belch. <laughs> you have to fart. My father farted, and he'd wake up in the morning walk. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> and blame it on my mother. <laughs> That's you, baby? <laughs> Girls don't fart, though, right? Girls poop. <laughs> my grandmother was the only woman that fart. But she'd wake till 4 o'clock in the morning. To sit on the toilet, never shit, just make echo sound. <laughs> Wake up everybody in the neighborhood. <laughs> it must be four o'clock. <laughs> Good night.